Andrea Klim, and you are watching Turn to the Stars. And this week on Turn to the Stars, I have a really great guest, and it is Susie Marat, and she is an intuitive artist, and she paints soul aura portraits. Welcome, Susie. Greetings. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Susie Thank came you. from Ringe, New Hampshire. Yes. To be here today, yeah, and she has uh, she does some really beautiful work, and um, as you can see on the screen, it's what she does is soul aura portraits. And um, before we get into talking about your work, Susie, I'd like to just uh, tell everyone about some news that turned to the stars. This okay, Saturday coming up, we have a really great event of which Susie is a part of. Yes, I am, and they. Here on the screen is our flyer for the Holistic Fair. This is our 28th Psychic and Holistic Fair, and it is this Saturday, March 14th, 2015, and it is from 10 to 4 p.m., and the theme of this fair is a Spirit of Colorful Voices event, and the admission is free to the public. We invite people to come and see us and uh, visit us. We have a great... Um, group of holistic um, readers and holistic healers and um, practitioners. We, yeah, and we have um, uh, about, I think we have seven vendors of all different holistic type of um, products. So I just wanted to mention that because Susie's going to be there with us. I am. I'm excited. Yes, it's a, it's a great event. It's a really great event. Yeah, we're. It's a quality event. Thank you. You're I, welcome. We, we try hard as a family to make sure that everybody is included yep. and it's a, you know, it's just a, right, it's something that's been created with an intention for um, spreading the news about the quality of holistic healing. Yes. So anyway, coming back to Susie, because uh, mm. I wanted uh, to have Susie on the show because I think her work is very beautiful Thank you. and wanted to share that with our public and um, can you explain to our viewers exactly what is the soul aura portrait well uh, a soul aura portrait is freestyle in nature which means that I I do it right then and there in front of the person mm -hmm. or I can uh, do it capture it remotely um, but uh, so I put the imprint down of the person that I'm doing and then the paint just flows. Uh, but what it is, it's a capturing a person's divine essence. Mm, that's very, that sounds like a really uh, good picture of what we're looking at when we see the that's, portrait. That's correct. It's, it's strictly for their wholeness, for their highest good, yeah. and um, where they're going to be going in life. So, um, so it has. There's lots of different information that comes off of that portrait. That's correct. Past, present, and future. So, so even before their soul incarnated into their body, mm -hmm. um, there's a story that needs to be told, and those the story comes out in the colors that appear when I'm putting their imprint down on paper. Yeah, it's it, it's so interesting to be able to have that ability to see yeah. what you see and then to put it on paper. Right. And um, do you have an example? I think uh, we could probably show. Uh, yes, the, there's two examples down on the floor. There we go. And and exactly what are we looking at? Mm -hmm. Well, you're looking at two. Uh, individual soul auras that I created on Sunday at Soulful Sunday at Essence of Healing in Salem, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. One is a female and one is a male. Um, <clears throat> and they, they, you can tell they're both very different. Yeah. And not because they're male or female, but because e each soul present there has a different story. Mm -hmm. So the colors reflect their story. Oftentimes, the colors reflect what's going on in their lives in the present moment. And if they're struggling with something, then that comes out in, in the colors. And also, uh, it could be a, a person that comes to me that is looking for answers. Mm -hmm. You know, where do I go from here? And the colors will explain all that to them. Yeah. So it's really a very beautiful um, 
thing to do. I love doing it. I love helping people. So it really helps them in their path, in their journey, in this life. Right, right. And it looks like it is a great keepsake. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and memory of, of, you know, something they had done that was really special. Well, that's the other thing. I tell people that not only can they frame the pictures and put them right. on the wall, mm -hmm. but they can use them as a meditation piece. Mm -hmm. If they'd like to put them up on a stand on a, on a table and, ha and light a candle. Um, I had a woman who met me at one of the events that I did the previous year. She had her picture framed, and she told me that when she meditates, it actually changes a little bit. Wow. And has guided her to make helpful decisions for herself. Wow, so, that, that's, that's really amazing. Yeah. And... Um, can you tell us about your history uh, around this work and how you began doing this? Well, I, I've always been interested in art. And as a matter of fact, bef when I picked up a pencil when I was a child. Yeah. But in 1977, I created my senior portrait, which mm -hmm. was an abstract, which I have a small picture of here I'm using in my cards. And around my self-portrait there are a series of colors and my professor asked me what they meant and I said I didn't know because I didn't understand that at the time right and so I kind of put that on the back burner because I was a graphic artist I was working mm -hmm. in an advertising agency going to college mm -hmm. had a family and then about Boy. six years ago I had what I call an awakening mm -hmm. and um, all of the colors that I used to see in my past began to surface, especially after I did, I took a class mm -hmm. on meditation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happened to be online mm -hmm. on a site that I frequented, which is, was called, is called The Journey. And I decided to offer soul or readings for everybody in this group. Right. And I thought, well, how am I going to explain to these people what their auras mean, yeah. I'd have be typing forever. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm just going to throw a piece of paper on the floor, uh -huh. and I'm going to do their colors. And so the people didn't have faces. They didn't have eyes. They just had the, the bodice here, mm -hmm. and then they had the colors. Mm -hmm. And I began interpreting the colors in that group, and it just blossomed from there. And um, a, a friend of mine named Sally started to have spa days and invited me to paint yeah and that's it took off from there wow so and you've been developing i've been developing just growing this growing. whole um this artistic talent that yes, you have I right have. so why do people come to have this done normally? well a lot of people just are interested in yeah. having a picture done mm -hmm. uh, but i would say that 90 percent of the people are truly searching mm -hmm. um, either they really know who they are and they want validation yeah or they they need to know where they're going mm -hmm. and uh, so after we do the picture yeah. or actually while we're creating the picture together I tell I like to let yeah. the recipients know that they're doing this with me I'm not mm -hmm. just doing it for them right because their soul is is so divine mm -hmm. and they carry it wherever they go right and so they share it with me and then I share it with them. So mm -hmm. um, they, they, when they sit down, we do each color together. Yeah. It's like a class. Yeah. And they get a, they get a write up and uh, I'll have them go to that color. We read it together and then we discuss it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, typically a soul aura takes about 45 minutes to an hour to, to create one the full to, yeah, yeah the full portrait the right. full portrait and if i do one at home it, it, depending on what a person wants then i can take more time right right so all they have to do is send me a picture right at the fair though you're doing 30 minute um i'm doing portraits, 30 minutes right? and i can do them in yeah. 30 minutes yeah um uh you know a lot of times i tell people Please just email me if you have any questions. Right. I, I don't, I'm not, yeah. you know, selfish about that. I don't mind at all. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think that having questions is a good thing. 
And when you're doing these portraits, what is it that you see? I mean, you look at someone. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that process? You look at them and what, you know, explain what you see in the aura and what inspires you to begin that. Well, this is really interesting because I just started explaining this to people. Yeah. I mean, people literally think, if you look at the portraits down below, that I see, <clears throat> and excuse me, an aura color in layers. Right. I put it that way for people to be able to decipher the colors themselves with the paper that I give them. But I, when I look at a soul aura, I see muted colors. Uh -huh. They're all swirling around the person. And I use my intuition to decipher which color is their core color, the right. first color, then the second and the third and the fourth. And it just so happens that each layer is about 20 years. So, um, of their life, of their life, because we move out right. and we come back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, as a person gets older, they may start to be more of what their core color is, mm -hmm. even though that's zero to 20 years. Right. You know, we're so used to going, you know, leaving our houses and getting an education and a family that we, we, it's not that we neglect but we don't see right. as accurately as we and you you must understand this with I astrology do. I do it's it's interesting what you're describing because everything goes full circle it, it comes full circle from conception yeah through birth yeah you exactly. know that whole period in time so it's a development yes and, and the soul comes back and uh you know that's what I believe I believe that too and yeah. I actually I believe it more now doing this right yeah so um and and there's a lot involved because as the colors swirl i have to ask questions yeah while i'm talking to the people yeah you know i ask my guides i ask god the angels yeah uh, the universe yeah what what color is their core color and what's the next color and it's just amazing i ask people not to talk because I don't want them to influence the mm -hmm. reading I'm giving them. Right. And then at the end, they usually validate it. So you're explaining it as you go? As I go. I'm talking, painting as yeah. I go. Yeah. And so for me, that's a healing uh, modality because I'm using both sides of my brain. Yeah, there's a nice, yeah, that, I can see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I've been able, these people that come to me are allowing me to grow as well as I'm allowing them to grow. Right, right. And and when you when you're um, when you're painting the portrait, can you also see places in there where you know possibly someone carried forward a block, which is something that is challenging for them. Mm -hmm. And so, how does that unfold? Well, this is that's an interesting question because there was a woman that I painted on Sunday, mm -hmm. and you know you you. You want to be careful yes. because you do not want to hurt that person. Mm -hmm. And their core color uh, is orange. Mm -hmm. And in orange, um, people tend to struggle with addictions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that gets brought out while we're reading the colors. Mm -hmm. And they will usually say, well, I'm a recovered alcoholic of 20 years. Or yeah. I'm struggling with quitting smoking. Or... Um, you know, eating is my thing. Mm -hmm. And so that opens up a whole new door for them to be able to talk about it. Yes. And express it. Yeah. And, and then also see all of the wonderful attributes that go with that color. Mm -hmm. And so I tell them, you know, you're not just that. Yeah. You're all of this. This is the whole person. And so they leave feeling empowered. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal, not to bring them down right. to a lower vibration, but to lift them up to a higher level of consciousness. Yeah, because, you know, I, I was thinking that question is because even in our, in like for me, I think about it in, uh, you know, from in the, um, in a chart, if someone has a block, but 
also a block is also has a strength to it yes there is you know a block typically means that there's two things or there's not an understanding of exactly. something and how to bring it together and it might be fear mm -hmm. it might be uh whatever it might be but so it sounds to me like the colors and how they are interacting yes um kind of gives them a support to realize that there's much more than just that there's other things that that's what i'm getting from yes what you're that's saying. that's exactly correct the yeah. whole person yeah is it comes out in this not just parts of that person and i think we as human beings tend to i at least i'm speaking for myself here is i will go in my head and I will hear things, you know, oh, you shouldn't do this, or maybe you shouldn't be this way. But mm. really, that's, that's, I want to honor who I am. Yes. And we want to help other people to honor who they are. Right, right. We're not, perf we're not perfect, but our soul is divine. Right. There's so. a light, you know, I, I have always believed that, that er inside everyone there's light. Yes. And, um, goodness. Yeah, inside everyone there's light. Yes. And because we come from light. Yes, exactly. Right? We come from a, a creative light that only gets bigger. So um, where are your portraits done, Susie? And well, I, my husband and I run two businesses out of our home, so <laughs> that gets a little crazy. Um, typically, I go to other venues. Like, mm -hmm. I'll be at the Psychic at a Turn to the Stars uh, on Saturday. Sunday, I will be at New Hampshire Metaphysical in mm -hmm. Londonderry. Um, I travel around, and yeah. I, I go to different studios. Or if somebody sends me a picture via Facebook or email, then mm -hmm. um, I can connect with that as well. I can do remote viewing. Oh, that's nice. So yeah. anybody, you know, they can call you up, send you a picture. That's right. And you can go from there and do the soul portrait. I do the soul portrait, and then I, and then I type up a reading. Uh-huh. And then I nicely roll it into a postal tube so it's yep. protected, and I mail it to them. Oh, very nice. You know, yeah, that's, so. that's nice to know. Do you have any real significant stories that you could share? I do have. Uh, uh, if we could, can we flash the, the portraits down below? I don't know. There we go. Yep. Um, the one on the left, I hope that's the way I'm seeing it. The and man. The viewers are the man. Um, he came to me on Sunday and sat in front of me. His name is Eric. And I had a sense that I, I should use the crystal tuner because I do use tuning forks sometimes uh -huh. for healing. And I kind of cleared the space with that. It's a beautiful sound. Who doesn't like to hear beautiful sound? Right. And he goes into a meditation. He does this all the time, evidently. The first thought that came to my mind was that he had a physical condition that he was dealing with. Oh. And his physical condition, I asked him if he was epileptic. And he said, no, I have MS. Oh. But this is the cool thing. They thought he had a form of epilepsy. In the beginning. In the beginning. Mm. And he has since then been diagnosed. And he also has a tumor on his pineal gland. And all of that came out in his reading. But he didn't tell me that until... So if we could flash back to that photo, um, to the to the uh, portrait of of the uh, of the gentleman. Yes. Uh, how? What is significant of that in the portrait? Does that show in the portrait? It or? it actually does. Um, in his heart chakra, you see all those dots going out. Yeah. Well, in MS, evidently there up your spine, there are little pockets or holes. I hope Eric, I'm telling this right. And those, the, something happens to those pockets, yeah. and that causes, um, yeah, you know, it's a neurological disease. Yes, right. Um, but he he tends to slip into meditation really easily because of this. Oh. Um, and on the top, see his the crown. crown chakra, yeah. yeah. See that little those mm -hmm. little dots going out. Well, we talked about his pineal gland at that point. Right. right. Um, and also the fact that he is writing a book. And that came out in his reading, the fact that he's intuitive, the first color, which is violet. Mm -hmm. um, he's a great communicator, yeah. which is the second color. And he's also, and then uh, the white, 
that goes around the the cobalt blue color yeah uh, represents an angelic intervention oh. and I asked him if he had an uh, when did he start going to the meditation classes that he went to yeah. and it was right around when he was 40 and that's Oops. Oops. Can I'm bring sorry. The back? If you can see there that we, we talked about the layers each being ap approximately 20 years. Yeah. Where that white line is above the blue. Yeah. That would be about 40. Wow. And wow. that came out in the in the painting and we discussed all that after. Wow, isn't that interesting? The different, you know, this method is another way to read someone's, yes. you know, energy and, and give them insight. And now, what is the red? It looks like bricks, sort of. Around that's some, um, well, white. that's indigo. Okay. <laughs> and those of you that are artistic would say indigo is mostly a bluish with a tinge of maroon, but um, on a scale, um, I make it, it can be cobalt. So, I mean, it can be indigo, excuse me. So I use the maroon to differentiate between the colors. Yeah, because when I look at it, you know, um, what it reminds me of, portraits that I've seen of Jesus, they ha would have that that sort of print or, you know, that that um, pattern. Yes. I've seen that on, on portraits of Jesus before. So that's why it caught my eye. And the, the rays going out, yeah. that is also significant to everybody's aura. Wow. Uh, because I, in order to make it, I mean, I'm sure if I spent hours and hours doing an acrylic painting, right. I could make the aura look muted. Right. But where the ray starts and extends outward is usually significant for that person as well. Right, right. And I want to make sure that we touch base on what we see oh. right here. Um, Susie bought these cards, beautiful deck of reading cards that you created yes. yourself, right? Yes. And can you show us some of them? I sure can. Okay. Um, if you were to purchase a deck off of my website, mm -hmm. you would get it this way in the mail. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got permission from several people that I have done soul auras for and um, created a deck of cards. There are 55 individual miniature soul auras with a caption at the top and then a, a detailed message that I wrote called Light Fragments. Mm -hmm. And um, th these messages I received about six years ago when I awakened mm -hmm. and I kept them in a document in my computer and I matched them up to the cards. So um, oh, I don't know nice. if you can capture these. And there is an instruction card and a prayer and there is a small basic aura color chart that you can you know get a basic overview of the different colors. Right. They are amazingly accurate. And um, right now I'm teaching a class on how to read them because if you do a past, present, future reading, mm -hmm. um, each card, well, there's a, an angel, but each card, the core color, has a meaning for that person's past. And right. it, it correlates very nicely. Wow, very, very nice. So. Um, cards are always a great, you know, for, you know, um, reassurance. Yes for confirmation or my daughter must have about 15 decks <laughs> <laughs> well the other thing Andrea I wanted to mention was yes. that I not only did these for people that like to do card reading but I created these for the amateur person that just wants daily guidance yes so you can just pass the cards mm -hmm. you know down face down on your bed in the morning while you're getting ready for work and simply say what do I need to know for today, God? Or yeah. angels, please let me yes. know. And pick one card and and focus on the message of that one card. Like this one here says circle of life. Yeah. And and that person might be struggling with their children moving out. Yes. And the message that is involved down here, focus on that for the day. Very, very, that, that is exactly what uh, Lauren and I do this often at breakfast. 
and <laughs> and so you know it really is helpful it gives you a get you off on the right foot you right know? it does get, get you off on the right foot yeah. so um i know we're getting real close to the end of okay. the show here but um this has really been really insightful thank you and you know i really appreciate you coming to share what you do thank how you. you do it thank and you where for it having came me from that's really great you know and you know what's interesting too is how it's it's a different modality but it's we're all so connected yes. isn't that amazing yeah it is and all paths lead to the same place right and but this is the way that you create yeah. and you pass it on right and uh, i think that's great so everyone um susie Murat and she is going to be with us at Turn to the Stars, uh, our 28th Psychic and Holistic Fair, this Saturday at the Yard. Yep. And uh, so I um, want to say a big thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And yes. thank you, everyone, for all your continued support of Turn to the Stars. And remember, turn to the stars, and you'll find your answers there. Take good care. We'll see you soon. God bless. <laughs>